I want to take a look at transformations in polar coordinates. That is, when we did transformations before, we looked at stretching and squeezing and, and whatnot. Um, in particular here, I want to look at um, translation. Um, if I shift in the theta direction or in the r direction, what does it do? Um, so I've got here um, one of the graphs we've looked at, um, r equals, I have 8 sine theta. So this is a circle of radius 4 that's shifted 4 up in the positive y direction. Um, it goes up as high as 8, comes down to 0. Right. Um, what I want to do is I want to shift it in the theta direction. So I'm going to replace this theta by theta plus or minus, I guess, a. About a. I want to say something in particular, 0.1. So notice if it was 0, 0.0, there's no shift at all. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Okay. I'm shifting in the theta direction, and what's happening is it's rotating around the origin. Um, in fact, I have this set up so that I can animate here on the parameter a. So where I'm going to say shift by an amount a. And a is going to range between 0 and 2 pi here. So let me see. Up in this corner, you can see the value that theta is doing. So the what's happening here is I'm generating a bunch of different pictures with different values of a. And then I just do it like a flip book. I look at them really quickly. You can't. They're quick enough so that it looks like uh, the circle's just going around. Now, at 6 frames per second, you can see the you can see that it's a little bit jerky. Um, I don't know if uh, if I can get it up high enough so that you don't. At 15 frames per second, it's tough for the human eye to tell. Um, the problem is the computer can't keep up with it, uh, and it's pausing there in between. So anyway, maybe at 10 cycles per second, we can 10 frames per second. Yeah, that's fairly smooth, right? I'm rotating by translating in the theta direction. Okay. Um, what if I translate in the r direction? So let's just go back to getting rid of this thing. This is my, what if I go in the r direction? So I'm going to say plus a. Okay. Plus a little bit. Let's just start with 0.1. Right? Well, what this is going to do is it's going to make all my r's a little bit bigger. Right? To 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Now one thing is we saw this when we were looking at Limachon. So what I have here is a Limachon um, with an inner loop that I've got a positive loop and a negative loop. By adding a, uh, something onto it, I'm making the positive loop a little bit bigger and I'm making the negative loop a little bit smaller. Everything is becoming more positive. Um, let me cut the, uh, the size of this down here. Rather than 8, let's cut down to maybe 4. Right? Uh, so what I want to do is I want to now animate on the shift in the R direction. So we'll shift at zero and then we get bigger and bigger shifts and eventually it grows out. And what you can see there is you can see that Limachon with an inner loop turning into a dimpled Limachon uh, and we never quite get to that. So I want to animate it a little bit further. I want to go to, what am I, eight? Let's go up to about ten. And let's do a few more frames here. Let's double the number of frames. So I'm shifting everything in the R direction. Right? I'm adding the A on out there. And we go out, there's a cardioid, and then a dimpled Limachon. It then becomes a convex Limachon, and it gets really big. Right? Shifting in the R direction. Let's try some of the other curves that we've done, shifting them in the R direction. Uh, what else? How about, um, well, let's just put this at zero for the moment. Uh, how about one of the rose curves? Let's take a look at um, something like that. Four times sine of two theta. And now when I animate that by shifting it in the R direction, well, you see those big pedals, those positive pedals getting bigger, the negative pedals getting smaller.
This leads to some really interesting stuff that I've done with uh, with polar coordinates. Let's go with you know maybe eight petals. Positive ones get bigger, the negative one gets smaller, and then all of a sudden everything's positive, and it's just growing. It's being shifted in the R direction. R is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay. One of the things I see is a four four bladed propeller there. Um, actually, what I see is some gears, and if I make this a, a bigger number, like ten, right? Um, And what I want to do is I want to cut down the amplitude here. So rather than four, let's say maybe two. Right? At this stage, I can see things where um, I've got a, an amplitude two sine curve, period two pi over 10, so fairly short period. And I've got it shifted so far up that essentially I'm looking at um, a, a 10 toothed gear. Um, if you just think of r equals a, a is a constant, well, r, r a is a number, that would be a circle. And what I'm doing is I'm varying 2 above a to 2 below a, to 2 above a to 2 below a, and I'm, and I'm getting this, uh, this gear, and I can get sort of small radius gear with big teeth, or as I get bigger here, the relationship gets more uh, of a big radius gear with small teeth. In fact, I can make the teeth smaller by just making that amplitude smaller. So the shifting in the R direction shows me how I can get different types of shapes from ones that I've already seen uh, on a smaller scale. I never shifted things this far when I was looking at them before. Um, yeah, there's all sorts of all sorts of nifty stuff uh, that we can get with these. Um, polar coordinates. Um, anyway, there's shifting and both in the theta direction and in the r direction shown in light of some animation here. So play. Do some experiments on your own. See what kind of stuff you can make. Um, there's a lot of possibilities. <laughs>